Hello, I'm John Grum, and welcome to our 250th Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our televised discussions twice monthly to demonstrate the value of civil, productive, open-minded political dialogue. Today, our panel will uh, share their thoughts about the most recent uh, election, and this ought to be really interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to sitting back and just listening. Today's discussion begins with Brian Lawbaugh, president of r &B Financial Services, followed by Tom Finley, retired vice president of human resources development at Rubbermaid Incorporated. Then Susan Hanlon, a uh, member of the Wadsworth City Council and retired dean of the College of Business at the University of Akron. Then Patty Haskins, former member of the Wadsworth City Council and the faculty of Wadsworth Senior High. Brian, now that this year's election is finally over, <laughs> what are you, what are your takeaways? Well, um, I think that our friends on the other side of the aisle have a lot to work on. Um, in my business, this is called being marked to market. Um, and they woke up on Wednesday morning with um, results of an election, not only the electoral college, but the popular vote. And that hasn't happened in a long time. And when you look at the heat map of the uh, states that voted Republican and just the areas in the country, there is a lot of red out there. And their message, uh, and some would argue that it really wasn't a message, what just, it, it, it just fell with a thud. I mean, um, it's hard to really describe, um, you know, just the, the disaster that this election was for our friends, the Democrats. Um, and the messaging that at this point in time, the Trump team was able to stay on the economy, the border, and some would say wokeism. Uh, rang true to a lot of people. And they're not racist. They're not fascist. They're not Hitler. They're, they're your neighbors. And they feel strongly that the country was not going in the right direction. And as most people will say, they voted with their pocketbooks. Uh, James Carville was famous for saying when they beat George Bush handily, Bill Clinton beat George Bush, it's the economy, stupid. And I think our friends forgot that, that people uh, in the heartland and throughout the country uh, saw it in their pocketbooks. Inflation was real. Um, and for those that live uh, in uh, you know, gated communities and uh, sheltered areas uh, on the east and west coast where $3.56 for a dozen eggs doesn't make a difference or $4 gas, or uh, just, you know, 20% increases in groceries across the board, you know, it matters. And the Trump, uh, the, the Trump team was able to capitalize on that. And that message ran true. Uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, uh, there's going to have to be, well, maybe fortunately, uh, our friends on the other side of the aisle will do some soul searching. And I've listened to a fair amount of podcasts uh, with people from in, within the Democratic Party that say, you know what, we have really got to take a hard look at the messaging that, that is getting out there for people. Um, the Israeli uh, uh, you know, conflict, uh, you know, the notion that somehow there's a strain of uh, Democrat that is uh, anti-Semitic uh, came through to the folks in Pennsylvania when uh, Josh Shapiro, a very popular governor in Pennsylvania pretty much wasn't picked because of his beliefs. You know, that, that, I mean, to lose, to lose the Jewish vote was amazing. And, and they did, you know, uh, they, they, they lost their base, you know, uh, more Latino men voted for Trump than ever before. More Jewish people and even Hasidic Jews up there in New York that normally, I mean, you know, they don't even go and, 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 and visit with those guys up there. They don't even go and politic to them because they know they got them in their back pocket. 
This time they went for Trump because there's, you know, there's obviously something wrong with the Democratic Party and their messaging and the different splinter groups that they're trying to cater to. And it came out in spades in this last election. So I'm not sure. I, I'd be interested in all ears. Um, some people are trying to blame Joe Biden. Some people are trying to blame <laughs> Harris. Some people are trying to blame the Harris Walsh ticket. Uh, but, you know, some of the smarter people are saying this is a structural issue with our party that we have gone in so many different directions that we don't even relate to the working man anymore. And and Trump has captured that working class blue collar guy. When when the rank and file vote for Trump and the only people that endorse him are the presidents of these unions that make millions of dollars a year being the president of a union, that says something. So, I mean, uh, it is what it is. And we'll see how things roll out. Uh, hopefully, you know, the people that said they were going to leave the country, there's the door. Go ahead. You know, nobody's stopping you. Uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen, Tom Hanks, Whoopi Goldberg, Barbara Streisand, you know, have at it. Uh, we'll see if they do leave. But, uh, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of soul searching because this was a resounding win. You cannot cut it any other way. You can't say that, you know, there was any sort of uh, shenanigans or anything like that. It is what it is. And he won the popular vote in the Electoral College by a wide margin. And, you know, they're going to have to really work on their messaging over the next four years. Now, uh, actual, and, and the Republicans have actually maintained the Senate and now they've taken uh, uh, the House. So hey, well, thank you. very good summary. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, Trump, if I recall, uh, even though he, he is, uh, has won, received, I think, four million fewer votes than uh, previously. Uh, I think both parties are in disarray. I, I think our, our uh, political platform around which we are uh, have worked for for centuries now, I was going to say, but a long time. I, I uh, can't mark that. But the point I'm making is it's falling apart uh, in terms of the election procedure and how people get uh, represented, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with fewer people voting, that's not a good sign. And uh, the, the list goes on. Uh, so... Uh, I would say that the system is really in need of overhaul. And that calls for both parties getting together uh, on how elections should be held and how leaders are presented to the voters. Susan, I'm dying to hear what you have to say. Uh -oh. <laughs> I hope I don't disappoint you. <laughs> um, so one thing that I think is amazing, how could the pollsters have been so wrong? I mean, how, what, how could they be so wrong? They were constantly, it's so close. We're not going to know for weeks, blah, blah, blah. There's something wrong with who they're polling or what they're doing. And it's to the point where, you know, I, I don't know. It's just so inaccurate. And you and you know that that stuff influences people, you know. So I don't know. That to me is crazy. I, I just cannot believe that she couldn't, that Harris didn't win a single one of those swing states. That's just unreal to me. And um, it, it's just a shock. Another thing is, I, I know, okay, I agree, and I've heard, you know, Bernie Sanders saying how the, the Democratic Party has lost their way, blah, blah, blah. But one of the one of the things to think about is, I think there were, and this is good and bad for the Democrats, but um, I think there were Republicans who didn't vote for Trump that voted for Harris but they're not ever going to vote Democrat again. I mean, they're not Democratic voters. They're just people who could not get past Trump's character and his, you know, 
Eric January 6th and his unfitness for office. I mean, real, rea- really, when you look at it. But so those people, they're not part of their group. So in, in, in some ways, they did even worse because what would it have looked like if people who just can't stand Trump but are good Republicans didn't vote for him? So I, I think that's another thing to think about. I'm also um, not real happy that we've won the president, the Senate, the Senate and the House. I'm not sure that's healthy. Um, now, the only the one thing that is encouraging and uh, Tom, it's similar to what that Heather Cox Richardson said in her post yesterday, because they voted secretly, the Senate did not neglect who Trump wanted. He's not a MAGA guy. And and I do wonder, you know, if the MAGA movement might lose some steam, which to me would be good. <laughs> I mean, the MAGA to me is not the real Republican Party. Um, and I'm concerned that a lot of these, especially, you know, the first time male voters voted for Trump and they and I hope they don't think that's really the Republican Party, but that's the only thing they know, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, Susan, I just thought it was shocking. Susan, how would you define a MAGA voter? A MAGA voter is all this isolationism. It's um, that, you know, we should bring all our manufacturing back to the United States. It's that, um, it, it, I mean, it's to, to some degree, you know, I don't want to go so far as to say that it's it's racist, but it it definitely has that undertone of, you know, white superiority, <laughs> I think, in terms of the people that you see wearing MAGA hats. And and so, yeah, I think it's just, you know, tear it all down. We're, we're in terrible shape. We're not. I mean, we're still a great country. I would um, add, I saw it isolation yeah that. isolationism yeah yeah um i think you know in the we're not and you know the whole attitude towards immigrant immigration where we should let anybody in and everybody that's coming across um you know are criminals and and rapists and all this stuff i mean we need immigrants it's our we and you know 90 percent of the people that are coming across even illegally i bet are fine people <laughs> they're not you know, they're not these criminals and, and murderers and that kind of stuff. Um, so to me, that's what MAGA is. Just shut it down. Close the borders. Let everybody fight their own wars. We're not helping. We need to bring all our manufacturing back to the United States and just sit here and be fat and happy. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm going to assume that you're not wearing a red hat. Anytime. I'm not wearing a red hat. Nope. <laughs> Patty, give us your thoughts. Well, um, I... Obviously, I was disappointed with the outcome of the election. I really wasn't surprised um, by it. I had a feeling that's the way it was going to go. Maybe it's because, you know, I live in a a, a very red district, a very red county, and now a very red state, so that I I see that influence. it was interesting watching all of the postmortems after the the election, um, and everybody had a good idea why uh, the Democrats lost. You know, it. I think it just may have come down to you know two simple things that there were those that felt the prices were too high, but failed to recognize that this started because of a pandemic uh, back in two thousand twenty uh, before this administration came in and then continued due to the fact that there was a pandemic um, but could not get over it. Um, also, I think, and this was already mentioned, people didn't vote. There, We had a lower turnout than occurred in 2020. And I think that some of those that didn't vote were possibly those that had voted for Biden four years ago but decided for this time, for whatever reason, not to come out and vote uh, because the results were lower. 
Now, I, and I'm not going to, Brian, I, I, you had mentioned uh, the fact that uh, I think you were making the assumption that voters thought that it was anti-Semitic to have not chosen um, the governor of Pennsylvania to be the running mate. I, I don't think that was the case. And the only place I've heard that very honestly is from right-wing pundits. Um, I think there was also the thought that it was better to keep him in Pennsylvania as governor because he was a very popular governor there. Mm -hmm. And of course he did support um, Kamala Harris, uh, with, even though he was not chosen as a vice president, he was an ardent supporter of her. Um, I, I do have concerns now though, because I, I've always uh, been against Donald Trump. I don't agree with him. I, I do wish him success. I hope he has a great presidency. Um, he is is inheriting a good economy, whether he wants to hear it or not. But the economy is improving. Um, the unemployment numbers are down. Um, it's going to take a while for things to get better. I hope he can do that without raising the national debt as his programs and his ideas are, are actually going to do. So maybe change his mind. I am extremely concerned about his choices for uh, his cabinet. Um, I think this is something we have to look at. And I think this is going to open the eyes of many Americans. I mean, I, I, I think some of the choices are good. I, Mm -hmm. I, I'm embarrassed to say I had no idea who Susie Wiles was mm -hmm. until she was appointed uh, chief of staff. However, everything I've heard about her is very good, that she's very reasonable. Um, uh, she, you know, obviously we don't share a lot of political, uh, it, we're not the same policy on, on various issues, but I, I think that she is uh, has character and uh, will do well in that position. Hopefully she can stay in that position. But some of his other choices are just, I'm, I mean, I don't know what he's thinking. You know, to, Seth for one. Pardon me? He can't be Seth. Oh my gosh, for Department of Defense. I mean, I, I had a very low opinion of him, having seen him many, many, many times on Fox News. Um, do not think that was a good choice. Uh, he does not have the, ex I mean, I know he was a soldier. That doesn't mean he can handle the Department of Defense. No, he no. has a degree from Princeton. He's a bright guy, but he has not been in a position to control this large unit that is the Pentagon and understand all the workings. And that's kind of coming from the senators too. Didn't even know who he was. Also, this last one of Matt Gates being uh, attorney general, you know, I'm sorry, but I've had concerns about Trump's character for years. And does it surprise me he picked someone that has very low character? No. If you, if, excuse me, Patty, but if you, if you remember, he has been diagnosed as a narcissistic personality and uh that's a disorder and it's certainly showing up in the behaviors and the decisions that he's making Are you we, talking have, about Trump? we right. have a, a, a bit of trouble uh, well what i you know the thing and this goes along with what tom just said and i was going to say is that he his biggest qualification is that you're loyal to him now i can understand where that could come into play but just because you're willing, when he says jump, you say how high, that gets you a job. I, to me, that's that's ludicrous. And that's very risky with our government. Now, hopefully, he will not get through. Now, there were others that I was not thrilled with, but I could live with. And I think are reasonable people. But this choice, you know, we could have a cabinet that is extremely dangerous. And the fact that it appears as though Trump is trying to take over control of the Justice Department, 
and the military and everything. And really, well, and that's, then that's to, what, and then to ask personality the, at, at work, right? It, and it, then it, to it, ask the Senate to make these have don't go into to go into recess so that he can appoint them all of these cabinet members without having to be um, confirmed by the Senate. I, I don't know. Scary. Can you explain that process? Well, a president is allowed to make appointments that normally require a vote or confirmation <laughs> if the Senate is in recess. Really? Yes. Well, I guess I knew that. but uh... They have to be out for 10 days. And Trump has already asked the Senate when they come, when they go in on January 3rd to simply go into recess <clears throat> and then he will be able to make the appointments without confirmation hearings because that's the only way Matt Gates will get through. <clears throat> now this will be up to John Thune to determine if he wants to do that or not. And he has not definitively said what he will do. I don't think he'll do it. <laughs> no. I think what we're forgetting is that for the first his first term, how long it took the Senate to approve his cabinet. Yeah. He was basically hamstrung for a long time, which was out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. um, and he's trying to avoid that. He's learned. I think he's not stupid, uh, but I think we have to be careful about trying to, you know, determine, uh, you know, what he is and what he isn't. Um, but, you know, he, he learned a valuable lesson, I think, in his first term mm -hmm. that those that he thought were loyal to him were not loyal to him. And so he's surrounding himself with people that he feels that are loyal to him. So but, let's let's see whether that's good or bad. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's Hitler. I think our Constitution and our way of government can withstand the next four years if it's going to be that bad. Um, and we'll see. We got a midterm election coming up. If things aren't working, right. then, you know, the, the party's the, over. <laughs> it, 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 it's over. So, yeah. you know, one of the things I want to just, you know, reply to Patty, the people that I've listened to, the David Axelrods and the James Carville, were very clear about the Josh Shapiro, that he was viewed as uh, Kamala felt that he would upstage her because upstage. he had a better understanding. He had been a governor. He related to people and that the Palestinian wing of the Democratic Party would revolt if if he was the vice presidential pick because he was viewed as a, a, a Zionist and a Jew. And there was no way around that. There was no way around that. And she caved to this Palestinian wing of her party, which include, you know, uh, the four people, you know, uh, AOC and, and uh, uh, the other the others in the party that have been very critical of Israel reacting to what they've been through. So, I mean, it's not just, uh, you know, right wing Tucker Carlson people that are talking about this. It's people within the own party. that are saying we got. I've, I've heard this. I've heard some well, of those comments. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, it's, it's not, I, I just excuse me for interrupting, but I just we keep overlooking the fact he has been diagnosed as a narcissistic personality, which is a mental illness. And it's he's proving this with all the behaviors we are seeing out here. And we keep we do make excuses for him. Depends on your party and that sort of thing. But I would I, argue, I, Tom, I that most, most politicians on the on the national stage have a strain yeah. of narcissism. Yeah. From Bill Clinton to, you know, George Bush one and two. Uh, even Jimmy Carter, no, when you no, read it, no, LBJ. No. I mean, if you've never read anything about LBJ, there oh, was a strain was, of narcissism, and I just can't. I just, you know, we just have to throw labels extent, around. Though. You know, yeah. so I, well, I'd like to uh, go back to the uh, well, two things. Go back to the election for one thing, and and I do think, and I, I said this on a previous program about Harris. Um, I didn't really think she'd be able to win because they didn't do the primary process. 
And I think it's very clear that if a, right. if a Biden would have said, I'm not running for a second term, they would have had a real primary. And I don't think she would have made it. She would not have been the candidate. And I they might have won. Them. I mean, I, I don't know anything yeah. against her per se, but she didn't. Des- and she's a female, too. You can't get past that. Right. I don't think she was the one to be the first female president of the United States. If mm-hmm. there was going to be one, it, I mean, Hillary Clinton what had deserved that a lot more than uh, than Harris. And right. and so I do think it, it's I'm not saying it's Joe Biden's fault, but it it is their the party's leadership's fault. Yeah. And I'll and, and Obama is leading the, the Democratic Party right now. And he's I think he and Michelle. Yeah, they're kind of elitists. They're very powerful. They're just controlling that party. And if you wouldn't blame anybody, I think I'd blame Obama if I was a Democrat. <laughs> one, one thing along yeah, those I don't lines. Want to blame people, you what? know, for, for who did it. I mean, they do have yeah. to look. The Republicans, remember, were in the same position in 2012. Oh, absolutely. The Republican you know, and Party so is dead. To say that blah, the party blah, blah, blah. is yep. down and out. Yeah. The Republicans, I mean, this conversation we could have had four years ago. Yep. I just, I just want to again when, remind you when you have a um, president of the United States, which has been diagnosed as a narcissistic personality, that's a loose cannon. He's a kind of person who could take us to war. Well, I, one thing I will say about that, though, too, I do think Susie Wiles is a very, very important um, yeah. uh, control. I think she could... It, it seems from everything I've read about her, um, she could control him. And she, the one thing that she said that before she took the job, she said she, she got, she told him she has to have unprecedented power to control who comes to the what to the Oval Office, mm-hmm. and she's going to control who gets to talk to him. And I think that'll make a huge difference with you know. Somebody okay, who well, needs help. Let me throw this out we'll there. We'll when, leave, leave it there. When, can I just make this one point? Sure. To Susan's point, when Obama and Pelosi went to Joe Biden and told him that he was going to step down, he was not supposed to announce anything, but he went that very next Monday mm-hmm. and threw all his support behind Kamala Harris. Oh. Sort of like, hey, listen, you're not going to tell me what to do. That Irish. That Irish anger yeah, came up. Okay. And said, You're not going to tell me who I'm going to endorse. So maybe and they have a the plan. Well, so. oh, Irish anger, there's nothing prejudiced about you there, Brian. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you all in two weeks. We'll see okay. you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, John. You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.